Hey everybody, this is Jimmy America, and you're watching Jimmy America Photo because you saw the title of the video and you're like, man, that would have been a great video to watch like three days ago. It's New Year's! And I'm going to be photographing some fireworks, and for that I'm going to do a really long exposure, probably around five minutes, I think. But I thought I'd show you all how to do some long exposure photography before the fireworks kick off because that's my time, not your time. The most important thing about long exposure photography is, of course, working at your shutter speed. Now, there is a couple ways that you can do this. The first one is actually with math. And then the second one is my personal favorite way. Yes! Just hit it, go, see how it comes out. Make it a little bit longer, hit it, go, see how it comes out. But that's not for you guys. This is an informational video on how to do something. So I'm actually gonna be good and I'm gonna work through the math with you. But don't worry, very simple math. I failed math a bunch of times, and even I can do this. All right. There are four things that you need when you're doing long exposure photography. Two of them you really need, two of them are nice to have, but they really do help. The first, obviously, is a tripod. This should go without saying, but you need to have a tripod because it's going to be exposure for like more than a second. Anything longer than like, I'd say a 20th of a second, tripod, good. The second thing that you must absolutely have is a camera that has a manual mode. This was so that you can set your shutter speed to be exactly what you want, your aperture to be exactly what you want, and your ISO to be exactly what you want. Very important. The other two things that you don't really need, but are good to have, is a neutral density filter, these you can pick up on eBay very cheap. I think this one was $4, and it just screws onto the front. This is if you're gonna be doing really long exposure photography, even at night, they're cracking up back there. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? The last thing that you don't really need to have, but it is nice to have, is a little remote. This one was also $15 on eBay. Everything else eBay, super cheap. All it does is make your photos a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner, and cuts down on the knock from when you hit the shutter. The way that we're gonna figure this out is what I call the rule of the 6400. And I'm gonna stop you right there, Jimmy. You see, we shot this about 30 minutes before the fireworks started, and I didn't have a script, I rushed through it a bit, and I kinda of feel like I glossed over a lot of the important information. So I'm just gonna let this run and voice over the top of it. Okay, the rule of the 6400 refers to the link between your shutter speed and your ISO. When your ISO is set to 6400 and your shutter speed is set to 1 second, you will get the exact same exposure that you would if your camera was set to ISO 100 and you had a shutter speed of 1 minute. This is a constant, so 1 second will be 1 minute, 2 seconds will be 2 minutes, 5 seconds will be 5 minutes, so on and so forth. This is really useful because instead of waiting for 1 minute to see how it's going to look, you'll only have to wait for 1 second for your photo to come up, you can decide if you want it brighter or darker. Awesome! Then you can make it brighter or darker until it's looking the way that you want it to, and you're ready to wait for the real exposure. The way that you make the scene brighter or darker is by simply adjusting your aperture. If you want it to be darker, you make the number higher. If you want it to be brighter, you make the number lower. Your exposure meter on the back of your camera and inside your viewfinder will give you a rough idea of the exposure. Stop blinking, you bastard! But it's not super reliable at night since there's such a contrast with the bright lights and unlit buildings. So here we have our first exposure for one second at 6400. Because of the high ISO, it's really grainy, but I'm happy with the lights, so let's set up the long exposure. Because most cameras' longest shutter speed is 30 seconds, you'll have to set your shutter to bulb mode. Now in bulb mode, your shutter will go from when you press the shutter button until you press it again. It's entirely manual, which means that you'll have to have a timer handy. Usually I use my iPhone, but I'm filming this on my iPhone, so I actually had to use my analog watch. I usually only use the analog watch for decoration because whenever someone asks me the time, I still pull out the iPhone. It's been so long since I've had to use analog time, but I'm slowly getting used to it. And now we play the waiting game. Hey, you over there, come on. Shh. <laughs> Filming in progress. 15 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can speed this up, you know, like just do time lapse on the video. Just yeah, just, just do total random minutes. things. You got 20 minutes to do totally random things. You can just speed it up. 30 seconds. Oh, 2012 Jimmy. You're an idiot. 45 seconds. So how do you spend your news? <laughs> Holding a camera. And... Time. Cool. Bam. One minute later and we have the exact same level of brightness, but no grain and lovely long light trails which you can see much better in the side-by-side -side comparison. These are straight out of the camera with absolutely nothing done to them by the way. So to sum up, decide how long you want your exposure to be, let's say about 2 minutes. Set your shutter speed to 2 seconds, your ISO to 6400, and your aperture to the number that puts the bar in the middle of your exposure meter. Take the photo, see how it looks, and decide if you want it to be brighter or darker by adjusting your aperture.
When you're happy with how it looks, set your ISO down to 100, your shutter speed to bulb mode, get a timer ready for two minutes, and you're good to go. Should you don't want to mess around with any of the math, there is another technique that you can use, but it does require more work on the post-processing end of things. Set your camera to shutter speed mode, use the longest shutter speed you've got, probably about 30 seconds, hit go, fireworks to start, capture some fireworks, it'll stop after 30 seconds, start again, 30 seconds, stop, start again at 30 seconds, then just stitch all the photos together once you get it back onto your computer. A lot messier at the end, but it will yield a similar result, and it actually can be a little bit safer in case you mess up the exposure halfway through. That's all for me. I've got to set up my shop for fireworks. This iPhone light is just binding me in the face, so I want to get away from it as far as I can. Have a good New Year's, and oh, right, uh, this next year, I'm going to be doing a whole series of uh, start to finish camera stuff, very basic things at the start, tell you how to use your camera, easy to follow, very little technical jargon. I'll have Violet Bow with me. Ta -da! She'll make things that I keep things easy to follow as I possibly can. And I'm definitely gonna do it all year. One a week, I can do it. My New Year's resolution. What's yours? Leave in the comments. Good luck shooting your fireworks. Fourth of July, if not New Year's, if you can't wait. Good luck. Okay. It's bright, isn't it? <laughs> Happy New Year's, everybody.